Israeli airstrikes targeted a neighborhood in the heart of Lebanon's capital late Monday evening, slamming into an area near the parliament, several embassies, and the UN headquarters, according to Lebanon's state-run national news agency. Lebanon's health ministry said at least five people were killed and 31 wounded. An Associated Press reporter at the scene in Beirut described significant casualties on the street as ambulance sirens echoed through the area. On Tuesday, residents and officials accessed the damage. Since late September, Israel has dramatically escalated its bombardment of Lebanon, vowing to cripple the militant group Hezbollah and end its barrages into Israel. Over the past year, more than 3,500 people have been killed in Lebanon by Israeli fire 80% of them in the past month Lebanon's health ministry says. The current wave of conflict gripping the Middle East began when the Palestinian militant group Hamas stormed from Gaza into Israel on October 7, 2023, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting around 250. Hezbollah began firing into Israel on October 8, 2023, in solidarity with Hamas. Israel's war in Gaza has killed over 43,800 Palestinians, according to local health authorities. The officials do not distinguish between militants and civilians but say most of those killed are women and children. The fighting has left 77 people dead in Israel, including 31 soldiers. مارق من هون امبارح ما في خمس دقايق بيني وبينهم وصلت على الدرج وطلعت الدبة أول دبة وثاني دبة ما لقيت إلا عائلتي حملت حالها ونزلت على الطريق ونزلوا على المريسة وهم من الروح الله بيعلم من الضاحية على بيروت عم يضربوا المهجرين لحونا على بيروت عم يضربوا المهجرين ما عم بيخلوا حدا ما عم بيخلوا حدا والله يحمي حزب الله President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia, easing limitations on the longer-range weapons as Russia deploys thousands of North Korean troops to reinforce its war, according to a U.S. official and three other people familiar with the matter. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. The official and the others knowledgeable about the matter were not authorized to discuss the U.S. decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets deeper inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. 
His statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building that killed at least eight people in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. Russia also launched a massive drone and missile attack, described by officials as the largest in recent months, targeting energy infrastructure and killing civilians. The attack came as fears are mounting about Moscow's intentions to devastate Ukraine's power generation capacity before the winter.